Hello everyone and welcome back to the next session in our NCD online course. This time an introduction about chronic respiratory diseases. This session is structured into largely two parts. Initially I want to give you an overview about the global burden of chronic respiratory diseases and mainly focus on the two uh, largest diseases in there, COPD and asthma and then show you the WHO approach to control these diseases and mention in particular GARD, the Global Alliance Against Chronic Respiratory Diseases. The learning objectives for these sessions are three. First, to gain an understanding about the key respiratory diseases and their risk factors. Then also an understanding about the different agencies and institutions involved in prevention of these diseases and last but not least we want to apply research methods to an example an of an integrated respiratory disease intervention for a low resource setting. This will be an activity then held on Epsilon. Let me start the session by giving thanks and reference to Dr. Nikolai Kaltaev, a former colleague of mine from WHO, who was the head and initiator of this Global Alliance Against Chronic Respiratory Diseases um, before he retired last year, I think. Many of the slides I took actually from his um, presentations with his approval. Now, when we think about the global burden of chronic respiratory diseases, we very often, of course, think about smoke. But not only the smoke you see there, people inhaling directly by lighting up cigarettes or other forms of tobacco, but also the environmental smoke transmitted by cooking stoves or other things. Those global prevalent and rather increasing risk factors of course lead to that chronic respiratory diseases worldwide are now top three of the key NCDs. Remember the key NCDs are cardiovascular disease, cancer, chronic respiratory disease and diabetes. In the 2004 and 5 estimates of global death, chronic respiratory diseases contributed to with 7% being the third largest NCD. How does that look like in the 2010 estimates? If we go to the global burden of disease statistics and look at this um, tree map, then you see that not much has been changed over the last decade as chronic respiratory diseases here are with 7.16% still number three after cardiovascular and circulatory diseases and cancer, the third largest NCD. So in summary, hundreds of million people worldwide have some sort of chronic respiratory diseases. The largest in terms of prevalence might be asthma, whereas about 80 million in 2005 were thought to have COPD and millions of others, other diseases. Chronic respiratory diseases underlie the same myth like other NCDs, which we need to dispel. One common misunderstanding is that they are mainly affecting high income countries, wh whereas in reality is also that almost 90% of those diseases occur in low and middle income countries. I show you later some maps illustrating this. What kind of key diseases are we talking about? Those are of course the lower respiratory infections, COPD, tuberculosis, cancer of the lung, bronchus and trachea and asthma as the key five diseases and you see there in this scheme, in this table, a difference between death, mortality and DALIs are most pronounced in COPD 
with 4.8% contributing to death, but only 1.9% of DALIs, and almost the other way around. The death contribution of asthma is less than half as the contribution of DALIs. You, if you understand how DALIs versus mortality are calculated, then you realize why those differences occur. What are the common causes of chronic respiratory diseases? This is also a slide you might have seen before, an illustration from WHO looking at the modifiable risk factors in the second column, but most important also is to look beyond the causes of the causes, so all the way to the left, um, aging of the population, urbanization being key drivers of risk factors behind chronic respiratory diseases. Now I quickly want to spell out what do we mean by COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, that's a common preventable and treatable disease characterized by obstruction of the airway. So the airflow is limited and this condition is usually progressive and associated with enhanced chronic inflammation of the airways uh, as a reaction to noxious gases or particles. Also typical for an NCD, COPD um, gets worse and has comorbidities, also heart disease being a typical one, which then contribute to the overall severity in individuals. So that's COPD is a classic example of NCDs are quite often coming in clusters, are not standalone diseases. And in terms of prevention and management, we need to have integrated programs looking also at the other factors. What are the classic risk factors for COPD? These are um, as we said, things we inhale, cigarette smoke, but also environmental tobacco smoke or other occupational smokes and the indoor and outdoor um, pollution, then on top of inborn conditions uh, determined by genes, infections, um, uh, we have a history of infections and the socioeconomic status underlying or being the causes behind the causes. And as I said, they are age-related like all of the NCDs. So with an expectation of an aging population, we have to expect that the number of people affected by those diseases, by COPD, will go up. And is that um, happening? Let's look again at the global burden of disease statistics. Here you see the rank order of mortality where on the left side is the 1990 statistics and there you see that COPD was ranked at number four and now moved to 2010, 20 years later to number three in death statistics. The other big mover of um, respiratory diseases is lung cancer coming from place number eight up to number five. However, as we learned, death is, might not be the best statistics for certain NCDs. So here we see at the death statistics that COPD in 1990 was ranked number four and now is ranked number three. But if we look at the DALIs, then you see the change that now COPD was ranked number six and has been improving to go down to rank number nine. So in summary about COPD, we can say that it's a major cause of morbidity, death and disability. One of the key risk factors is tobacco smoking, but it shouldn't be regarded as simply the smoker's cough, a smoker has to put up with a disease that kills per year at least 3 million people world, worldwide and could be, especially in its milder form, be treated.
Let's look also at the geographical illustration of the burden of COPDs to see the difference between DEF and DALIs. Here on this world map you see the red zones around the Americas, Russia and China. Looking at DEF, but if you look now at the same map for the DALIs, then you see what was before red is now in the yellow zone and actually countries in South America and in Africa have a higher DALI contribution. Why could that be? One thing to look at is at the relative or different importance of the risk factors for COPD. Foremost, as we said, tobacco smoke, because there are actually opposite patterns in the different geographic areas the Americas, Europe, Asia versus Africa. For instance, if you look up the statistics on risk factors contributing to overall DALIs, the disease burden, in Europe, then you see that after blood pressure, tobacco ranks as number two. Um, urban air pollution ranks um, further down at number 10 or, or something like that. Indoor smoke from solid fuels is the uh, lowest contribution on this scale. However, switching over to Africa, there you see that indoor air pollution is much more important as a contributor to the overall disease burden, whereas tobacco smoking hasn't yet taken off as being such a contributor. That can tell us also something about the epidemic yet to come. The other key disease we mentioned was asthma. Asthma, again, is not a public health problem only for high-income countries, but it occurs in all countries regardless of the level of development. And like COPD, over 80% of asthma deaths occur in low- and middle-income countries. Again, I'd like to show you a couple of maps about the distribution. First, the prevalence of asthma across the world. There you see that the prevalence is highest in the Americas and some countries of Europe and also very high in Australia and New Zealand, whereas it's low in China and Russia. But if you look now, at the case fatality rates, asthma death per 100,000 asthmatics, then you have almost a reversal. Um, what was low before has the highest case fatality rate, and what was high, including Australia before, is almost at the lowest mortality rate. So, difference between prevalence, occurrence of the disease, and this fatality rate as an expression of successful or non-successful treatment. And one could overlay this map with another one looking at the proportion of the population covered by access to essential drugs, because asthma being a chronic disease needs to be treated um, with drugs and, and people need to have access to them. And there, no surprise, high levels of access and over 95% of the population coverage Again, in the Americas, in many countries in Europe, in Australia, but much weaker in Africa, South America, or Southeast Asia. Now, let me finish this presentation by highlighting the WHO approach to control respiratory diseases, um, the Global Alliance. One of the key, before the Global Alliance, actually one of the key instruments is the FCTC, the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, because we realize for COPD at least, tobacco control is the key driving risk factors, and also for lung cancer. You heard about the FCTC already. At the moment, 176 parties have signed to it. Of course, between signing and implementing, there's a difference, and I'll recommend you to look up the FCTC website housed on uh, WHO. This is the first UN treaty on, on a health goal or health risk factor. A very famous 
policy instrument to control NCDs. Then there are a number of other instruments and organizations involved in various aspects of chronic respiratory disease prevention. International guidelines on asthma, on essential drug and um, making them available. The Global Obstructive Lung Disease Organization, GOLD, you can also look up on the web another um, effort between the NHL BI in the US and WHO, the PAL practical approach to lung health guidelines you can find on the WHO website. So in summary, there are a number of documents and organizations and I just want to point out in the middle down there the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease now, they call themselves the Union. We are coming back to their contribution in our exercise on a research proposal. So what WHO decided in their wisdom is to try to coordinate or sort out this, this, this uh, manifold number of players and organizations involved in prevention and control of lung diseases into this network called GARD, the Global Alliance Against Chronic Respiratory Diseases. And this GARD is of course also part of the WHO's work to prevent and control other chronic diseases because we mentioned already that controlling them needs to be done comprehensively and integrated with other efforts. And here is only a picture of the stepwise framework for planning national activities for the prevention and control of NCDs. We are coming back to this framework in the final exercise of our course. I just wanted to start highlighting and making you familiar with the symbol and the structure of this framework. This concludes with the guard vision of a world where all people breathe freely our presentation on chronic respiratory diseases in our NCD online course.